Hello students and welcome to topic 13 of alternative and renewable energy sources. The topic we will be covering is hydropower and calculations. Hydropower or hydroelectricity refers to the conversion of energy from flowing water into electricity. It is considered a renewable energy source because the water cycle is constantly renewed by the sun. One of the first uses of water power was for mechanical milling, such as grinding grain. Modern hydro plants produce electricity using turbines and generators where the mechanical energy is created when moving water spins rotors on a turbine. The turbine is connected to electromagnetic generator, which produce electricity when the turbine spins. Hydropower is the largest contribution of all renewable energy sources and accounts for 16.4% 16 16 of worldwide electricity production. 6% of the United States electricity is supplied by hydropower. The mix of electricity generation in the United States has changed from 2007 to 2013. The contribution of hydroelectric has increased in percentage from 6% in 2007 to 7% in 2013. Natural gas has increased from 22% to 27% in the same time period. However, it appears that the contribution of hydroelectric to the total world generation remains at 16%. There appears to be potential for future growth in hydroelectric on a global basis. This is a photo of the Grand Three Gorges Yangtze River in China. This is one of the world's largest, if not the largest, hydroelectric dams facilities in the world. Hydroelectric is a very low cost source of power. However, the upfront costs are high. Hydroelectric is a reliable source of electricity and makes up 58% of the renewable generation in the United States. As shown here, Dammed reservoirs can help with flood control and may provide for recreational areas. However, there are many concerns with hydropower, particularly large dam facilities. Damming a river has a significant impact on the regional ecosystem by flooding upstream landscapes, disrupting habitats for wildlife, blocking fish packing, passage, and often displacing local communities. Dam failures can be catastrophic, further disrupting landscape and claiming the lives of those living downstream. Hydro plants are not completely free of ground greenhouse gas emissions. As with most forms of energy, carbon dioxide emissions occur during construction particularly as a result of large quantities of cement used and loss of vegetation in flooded areas creates methane, another greenhouse gas, as a matter decays underwater. The vegetation covered by the water behind a dam decays and releases methane, which has a greater global warming potential than carbon dioxide. Here is a list of some better known hydroelectric facilities. Three Gorges has a capacity of 17,000 megawatts. Hoover Dam only has a capacity of 1,500 megawatts. There are four types of hydroelectric facilities. Impoundment facilities, pump storage facilities, run of river facilities, and in-stream hydropower. Hoover Dam, shown here, is an abutment facility. 
This slide lists the major components of an abutment facility. With impoundment facilities, hydropower projects with a reservoir, storage hydropower, store water behind a dam for times when the river flow is low. Power generation is more stable and less variable than for run of river plants. The generation states, stations are located at the dam toe or further downstream, connected to the reservoir through tunnels or pipelines. Types and design of reservoirs are decided by the landscape and in many parts of the world are inundated river valleys where the reservoir is an artificial lake. In geographies with mountain plateaus, high altitude lakes make up another kind of reservoir. Reservoir hydropower plants can have major environmental and social impacts due to the flooding of land for the reservoir. Pump storage plants are not energy sources. Instead, they are storage devices. Water is pumped from a lower reservoir into an upper reservoir, usually during off-peak hours, while flow is reversed to generate electricity during daily peak load period or at other times of need. Although the losses of the pumping process make such a plant a net energy consumer, the plant provides large-scale energy storage system benefits. Pump storage is the largest capacity form of grid energy storage now readily available worldwide. This is a photo of Niagara Falls, which is a run-of-river facility. This is a photo of the old Niagara Falls power plant. This is a new Niagara Falls power plant. Run the river hydroelectricity is considered ideal for streams or rivers that can sustain a minimum flow or those regulated by a lake or a reservoir upstream. A small dam is usually built to create a head pond, ensuring that there is enough water entering the penstock pipes that lead to the turbines, which are at the lower elevation. Run of river plants mainly produce energy from the available flow of water, taking advantage of the natural elevation drop of a river. Water is diverted into a penstock and channeled to the turbine and then turn, returned to the river. Run of river plants have either no storage or short-term storage, allowing for some adaptations to the demand profile. Such reservoirs are usually smaller than those of reservoir hydro hydropower plants, but nonetheless, dams can be 10 to 20 meters high and can have gates to allow for water storage. Power generation is dictated by local river flow conditions and thus depends on precipitation and runoff and may have substantial daily, monthly, or seasonal variations. Environmental impacts are generally lower than for similar size hydropower plants. Within stream hydropower, turbines are placed within a free-flowing river or stream. They capture water's kinetic energy without creating a reservoir and its repercussions. The underwater analog to wind turbines, the blades rotate as water moves past, generating relatively continuous electricity. No barriers, diversions, or storage are required, only limited structural support. To optimize existing facilities like wares, barriers, channels, or falls, small turbines or hydrokinetic turbines can be installed. Usually the turbine is mounted on the bottom of the river, an existing river structure, or on a floating structure. The low impact turbines act much like underwater turbine 
and use the river current for power generation. The technologies may operate in unidirectional or bidirectional tidal river flows and do not divert river flow or use dams to retain water or create an artificial head. Some countries depend solely on hydroelectricity production. Often hydropower is the main or even only source of electricity production in developing countries. Any other conventional energy source requires steady fuel, such as coal, gas, or oil, which has to be purchased. Here list countries that depend wholly or almost wholly on hydroelectricity. Here we begin discussion about turbines. A turbine converts energy in falling, falling water into shaft power. There are various types of turbine which can be categorized in one of several ways. The choice of a turbine will depend mainly on the pressure head available and the design flow for the proposed hydropower installation. Turbine types. Turbines are broadly divided into three groups high, medium, and low head, and in two category, categories, impulse and reaction. An impulse turbine is a horizontal or vertical wheel that uses the kinetic energy of water striking its buckets or blades to cause rotation. The wheel is covered by housing and the buckets or blades are shaped so they turn the flow of water about 170 degrees inside the housing. After turning the blades or bucket, the water falls to the bottom of the wheel housing and flows out. A reaction turbine is a horizontal or vertical wheel that operates with the wheel completely submerged, a feature which reduces turbulence. In theory, the reaction turbine works like a rotating lawn sprinkler where water at a certain central point is under pressure and escapes from the ends of the blades, causing rotation. Reaction turbines are the type most widely used. The types of turbine and whether they operate on high, medium, or low pressure is given in tubular form. The difference between impulse and reaction can be explained simply by stating that the impulse turbines converts kinetic energy of a jet of water in air into movement by striking turbine blades, buckets or blades. There is no pressure reduction as the water pressure is atmospheric on both sides of the impeller. The blade of the reaction turbine on the other hand, are totally immersed in the flow of water, and the angular as well as the linear momentum of the water is converted into shaft power. The pressure of the water leaving the runner is reduced to atmospheric or lower. In this example, we calculate the power from the 300 foot head. Water weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic foot and efficiency of 83% and a flow of three cubic feet per second. We take the 300 foot head, multiply it by the three feet cubed per second, multiply it by the 62.4 pounds per foot cubed, multiply it by the 83%. Then we have to divide it by 550 foot pounds per horsepower per second, multiply by 0.746 kilowatts per horsepower and arrive at 63.2 kilowatts. Can we estimate the power of the Hoover Dam? The average flow rate through Hoover Dam is 610 cubic meters per second or 35 0.31 cubic feet per meter. 
the average head is 590 feet. So we take the 590 feet, multiply by 22,000 feet cubed per second, multiply by the 62.4 pounds per foot cubed, multiply it by or divide it by 550 foot pounds per second per horsepower, multiply it by the 0.746 kW per horsepower, multiply it by 85% efficiency and arrive at 934 megawatts. Here are some notable hydroelectric facilities. If there were any questions, please post them on the eLearn help discussion.